Okay, good. Why is the carbon a nucleophile? Well, we know there's a resonance form where the carbon has a negative charge. So that's why this, uh, and remember this is called a phosphorus illide. This is a reaction, again, that can attack either an aldehyde or a ketone. What type of functional group did we produce here? A alkene. Carbene. Alkene. Oh. Carbenes are a, a rare compound with an incomplete octet, if I remember correctly. So this is just an alkene, a normal alkene. So how would you know when to use a Wittig reaction on a synthesis? This is something you're pretty sure to have to use in a synthesis. Well, when you're trying to make an alkene out of an aldehyde or a ketone. Now, previously, I think we only knew one. What was the other way? What was the way, way we learned last term to make E2 alkenes? E2 and E1. Right. Last, previously, we only had, I think, that one way to make alkenes, E2 and E1. Um, but now we have another very powerful way to make alkenes out of aldehydes and ketones, which is the Wittig reaction. So this is going to be a really useful technique now for um, making alkenes. Notice that this is also useful because it forms new carbon-carbon bonds. So this molecule has more carbons than we started. So now we're starting to see more and more ways to make carbon-carbon bonds. We don't just have grid yards anymore attacking aldehydes and ketones. The Wittig reaction also gives us a new carbon-carbon bond. What if we only wanted to form a carbon-carbon single bond here? Then we wouldn't use this. We'd use a Grignard or something else. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right. I wasn't going for that, but that would be a good answer. Yeah, you could have just used a Grignard, but that would give you an alcohol. What were you going for? Oh, okay. So we could have just hydrogenated this now. Oh, okay. yeah. You right? Just, yeah. So even though the Wittig reaction directly forms a carbon-carbon double bond, it's still very useful if, if, if what you want is a carbon-carbon single bond, because you can always just hydrogenate the double bond like we learned last term. And then we would have completely gotten rid of all the functional groups. So the Wittig reaction is a useful way to add more carbons to the chain, uh, especially if you don't want any functional groups besides maybe a double bond. And even that we could get rid of by hydrogenating. Okay? Now it's very important to see how to do this without going through the mechanism as well. So what's the basic thing that's happening here? Notice that basically the phosphorus and the carbonyl oxygen are swapping partners. Okay. If you're going to do this without the mechanism, you just need to notice that the phosphorus and the carbonyl oxygen are just swapping partners. The phosphorus, instead of being um, bonded, no, did I get that wrong? Yeah, I should have said that the illide carbon and the carbonyl oxygen are swapping partners. The illide carbon and the carbonyl oxygen are swapping partners. The illide carbon is moving over here and the oxygen is moving over here. And they're still both going to be double bonded. They're still both going to be double bonded. this is a good way to see overall what's happening here. If you just line them up like this, the oxygen is moving over to the right to be double bonded to the phosphorus, and the alkyl group is moving over to the left to be double bonded to the former carbonyl carbon. So for example, let's try drawing the product here without doing the mechanism. We should be able to draw the product here without doing the whole mechanism.
To me, it helps even to just write it like this. Now, where the oxygen used to be, I put the cyclohexene ring. And where the cyclohexene ring used to be, I put the oxygen. So we can get through that easily through that whole mechanism without going through, uh, with, through the reaction without going through the mechanism. All right, that's a, a very important reaction. So now we've seen two different types of category two. One type of category two is when you attack with an alcohol. And then we have a completely different, I'm getting confused, let's try it. We've seen two types of category three. We've seen two types of category three. One type is when you attack with a primary amine. We saw that the primary amine nitrogen attacks twice to form a double bond. And the other type is the Wittig reaction, where it's the ili carbon that attacks twice. So we've seen two ways that we can end up with a double bond here. We could have the uh, primary amine nitrogen attack twice, um, or we could have an ili carbon attack twice. Those are the two types of category three that you need to watch out for. One was reversible and one wasn't. So they're in some ways similar, in some ways different reactions.